the rest of the year? I'm going to make money because you're the one who trained us. You're the one who sold out the whole arena. How about we promote you? I said, what? Wow. <laughs> I said, I'm flattered. And so that's how I wasn't even planning to start. And I was starting going back and forth. And all the companies in UK, I was doing training for them in between. And that's how I started. And then one of my clients was, had, had, was an internet business. He was just starting an ISP in 1997, long before people knew how to spell email and not anything about internet. And I got in and I saw that that is the future. So like in Tony Robbins, one thing is, if I do, I'm an all or nothing kind of a guy. Either I'm all in or out. And when I saw the internet, I dropped everything and I did internet full time with the company. I became the third largest shareholder of the company. And then, long story short, we took a company from nothing to IPO to two billion dollars. And I was one of the early ones to get in. And I was not the founder or anything, but I had enough that I was pretty much set. And I was I had hundred thousand plus shares and the stock was at fifty dollars. <laughs> So, and those of you who understand the meaning of vested, yeah. mm -hmm. I was vested. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But I did not cash out because I was running three divisions and of that company. And I said, if the stock is at 50 now, I, I haven't even, even tapped the potential. I'll diversify when it goes to 100. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> I would be standing here. <laughs> the stock went the other direction. And the stock market crashed. Yeah. How many of you remember the stock market crash? It took me down, absolutely. And how many of you understand what margin call is? <laughs> zero would have been such a happy day. <laughs> zero would have been so. I was looking at zero like this. <laughs> I was at far below. And when the stock market, I'm laughing now, but when the stock market crashed, I slept like a baby. Woke up every hour and cried. <laughs> Today, and now, I, every adversity that happens in your life, you look back today and say that that's what helped me shape me who I am today. Would you agree? Yes. That which does not destroy me makes me stronger. But I couldn't see it back then. It's very hard to see when you're going through it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I'm saying, come on, man, give me the rope, get it over with. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to myself. You know? I said, I'm flipping through channels in the middle of the night. I can't, I can't fall asleep. It's so much in your mind. You're thinking, how am I going to feed my family tomorrow? How am I going to ward up all these creditors that are just after me, hounding me? I'm going to forget about the credit. I'm going to buy food tomorrow. And so you cannot fall asleep. So I'm flipping through channels aimlessly. I'm not watching. There's TV's on. But have you seen the TV's on but you're not watching? Because your mind is somewhere else. And that's what I mean by being present. So I could be in the living room, TV's on, but my mind, I, I cannot tell you what's on. But then all of a sudden, this guy comes on TV and he goes, it's a real estate guru. He goes, you can make money in real estate with no money, no credit. I go, I qualify. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I qualify. Well, they go, come to my free seminar. I said, I can afford that. <laughs> but what I didn't know, that it was free to get in, but not free to get out. <laughs> How many of you have been to that seminar? <laughs> $22,800 later, <laughs> when I got out, and I didn't even have the money. I had my last credit card, Amex. Didn't have those as preset spending limits. And so I just put it on. If it's that good. My philosophy in life is I'll trust you unless you give me reasons not to. And all these people before me telling me how they made money in real estate in the room on the TV. And they're willing to give me step by step the whole thing. Wow. If that's what it takes, there it is. I'll make it back. But 
I need to make it back before the end of the month. Then I have done. And I wish I could stand before you and tell you, like the movies that right on the 29th at midnight, I just <laughs> no, it didn't happen like that. It took me only six months to do my first deal to get my first check. And that was the longest six months. Because during those days, you feel like, what the hell am I doing here? Real estate doesn't suck. It sucks. And I said, I saw the other day a, a sticker that says, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I said, um, so, I, the difference between somebody who pays $23,800 and somebody who pays $250 for a carbon sheets course or an online course is not that I'm getting 2,000 times better quality information. It's not the quality of the information, it's the level of commitment that the person who writes the check. I had no way out. I think for me that's my and death. And so my level of seriousness was un unmatched. I made a decision, I cut off all of them. Six months, I'm going to have to go forward because there's no other way. And all these people before me have died. For me, to tell real estate doesn't work, it's a little too late. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. How many people do we know has made in real estate? Seven out of 10 millionaires made their millions through what? Through what? Real, real estate. estate. Real estate. So for me to say real estate doesn't work, <laughs> if, if, if real estate doesn't work, look in the mirror. <laughs> You'll find out the reason. So I, this was, this was actually a few years, years ago. I was at a mastermind and we caught up again. And I didn't tell them, hey, how are you, man? I love that kind of sleep. And so, um, my, uh, I share that real estate is an ideal business. Real estate is an ideal business because I stands for income. And real estate can give you cash and cash flow. Would you agree? D stands for depreciation, tax credit against earned income. The depreciation. E is for equity buildup. And equity buildup is if you buy a house for $100,000, you put 20000 down, you get $80,000 mortgage. And 10 years from now, nobody can say what the value is going to be of the house. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. yes. But one thing I can guarantee you mathematically, that $80,000 loan at $100,000, this $80,000 is going to go down, guaranteed. Am I correct? Okay. That is the equity, equity buildup. And appreciation, appreciation is what happens from 100,000 on top. So that's how you become wealthy. And L is for leverage. But this is a business that you can leverage. Unbelievable with other people's, not just multiple things that you can leverage, OPM, which is other people's what? What is it? You can also leverage OPC which is other people's what? Credit. Other people's credit. But most people don't leverage is OPE, which is more powerful than the other two combined. What is OPE? Other people's experience. Other people's experience. What? Other people's experience. Or people who have gone before you. So that you can avoid the pitfalls that they have. If you want to do all the mistakes yourself, it's, it's very expensive. And it's, it's, it hurts a lot too. So I'll give you an example of my my first house and see if I have the ideal site. It's true or not. And this is my very first house I bought and in about 30 days later and this is very funny that you see the on the TV that this disappeared. <laughs> it works over there, then it works over there, then it disappeared. It's a dark hole. <laughs> so, so, I have to figure out a special <laughs> if he wasn't thinking that there's a thing. So, this is 30 days late. later. Uh, I did this. So let me give you the numbers. And actually, I, I sent this in to my mentor, and after I did it, I had about $19,000, and I put $12,000 into the house, made it brand new, completely brand new. 
And so I had almost $32,000 in it. But the day I finished it, I got an FHA approved appraisal for $65,000. So it's like buying a brand new house for less than 50 cents on the dollar. Am I correct? Yeah. So I, but I couldn't sell it because the lady that I sold it to, I thought she, you know, I didn't understand. I just, this is my first deal. I didn't understand credit. I didn't understand. I could barely spell bills. And mortgage, I didn't understand any financing, nothing. So I, she said she wants to buy it. I, I went to a broker and said, hey, can you get her a loan? They go, yeah. But then they, they lied to me. So they just played with my, um, they didn't know that how hard I was working, how many sleepless nights I'm having. And they just took my file and pulled it for two months. Two months later, they gave me the file back and said, sorry, we can't get her a loan. So I'm going, what do you mean? Every week I call you, every week I call you. So in two months, why can't you give her a loan? She goes, oh, she has 400 credits for you. But you knew that day one. Why didn't you tell me day one? Why didn't you wait? I could have gone to so many other people with what you did. So, you know, and when you're not forthright, truthful, you really, do you think I'm going to go back to that morning broker again? No. But he gave me a very uh, interesting life lesson, that instead of blaming him, I then realized that in order for me to stay in this business, I better learn finances. I better understand credit. I better understand this. And I became so good at it that I owned my own mortgage company. Because I didn't trust anybody to do that. And I wanted control. Because that's the money controls the deal. And that's why Siva, you know, they do a funding warehouse. And my good friend George over here, and the people, they do lend money. That's another way to do it. And so what I did is I came to a, my local real group. After when that happened, that was my lowest point. And I said, this guy said, this, this thing really, real estate business really sucked. And then finally, when I did everything right, and I got the buyer, got everything, and then he kicks me. That was below the belt. <laughs> that was really below the belt. But that's when I said, so I don't know, I, I think this is it. I'm going to go back to public and job. But I went to my REA group meeting. That's why, whether it's three people or 30 people or 300 people, to me, you are here this evening. I have an opportunity to make a difference in your life. I'm going to give my 1,000%. And whether the room is 1,000 people or 10 people. And that night, if this REA group is my way to pay it forward, because if it wasn't for that night, if it wasn't for someone like you, that's sitting right next to, I was sitting in that chair, in my rear group listening. And I, I'm like crying, telling her myself, sad story to Kim. And Kim said, you know what? If that's what's happened, why don't you do this? I said, do what? Get a rope. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go, do a cash out refi, and then do a lease option. I mean, please speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned real estate. It's, so she helped me. She got that. She said, exactly, go to this bank. Go to the First Union Bank on Auburnton and in Largo Road. And go see Cheryl Branning. She's the manager. And tell her that take, take this, this, this paper. You can do 100,000 100, deals. But you never forget your what? That's your puppy love. <laughs> and I just went there and gave it, and she gave me a check. 80% cash out green by 80% of 65 is how much? 52. That's my first check. $52,000. How much I had into the house? 31. And that's my the prop. And plus, I had 20% equity left in the house. And my Lease payment was 650. My payment was 429. PITI, and every month I got that. And uh, I want you to fast forward six years. Fast forward six years, and then one day, um, Deborah Johnson hasn't paid for two months. So I sent my property manager to go look at it, what happened, and she went there. She called me. She went, Oh my God. She is long gone, and the place is a total what? 
Disaster. 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 <laughs> that's my second taste. <laughs> no. I want you to know that that's the reason why she's a property manager and you're an investor. Because most people out there have no vision. They cannot see past what's right here. I want you to think logically that six years ago, I made this house brand new. Am I correct? Yes. So six years later, she's told me that the house is a total mess, total disaster. The way she was talking on the phone, I said, calm down. I said, calm down. Do I need a new roof? Do I need a new roof? No. 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 Do I need a new central heat there? No. No. Because I bought it brand new six years ago. All the doors, windows, everything was brand spanking new. The kitchen was brand, not brand spanking new kitchen. What she said was that the property was full of trash, so I had to remove the trash and do paint and what? Carpet. 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 Yeah. And this time I said, damn with carpet, tile the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 650 square foot home. So, right there, I spent $3,000 and got a brand new house again. And so, I want you to go back. Did I get about $20,000 cash six years ago? Yes. Yes. Then I got $14,000 because I've actually got 220 